Drill here. Drill to 12,761 feet. Producible reserves at that depth are 3.73 billion cubic feet of gas. That's what we would like to have, a direct method of finding oil and gas, of saying how deep it is, and of saying how much is there. Cheap, too. But, alas, we do not have such a method. All we have is geophysics. So, most exploration for petroleum is done with indirect methods. Now, these indirect methods do not detect the oil or the gas itself. All they can do is to identify the geological situations where petroleum may be found. So, that's our task then. Find these situations. Now, we all remember that geological situations where petroleum may be found have five features. First, a source rock containing enough organic material to be a significant source of petroleum. Second, a reservoir rock, porous and permeable, into which we will drill our well. Third, a permeable path for the petroleum to migrate from the source rock where it is generated to the reservoir rock from which we hope to produce it. Fourth, a trap limiting the reservoir in some way. And fifth, a seal to prevent further migration of the petroleum out of the reservoir trap. So we can refine the statement of our task a little. Now it is this. Find geological situations with these five features. Let's take a very simple example. Let's suppose that a slice through the earth uh, section would reveal layers of rock like this. First, a massive source rock, probably a black shale, rich in organic remains, deposited rapidly in a landlocked sea. Next, a progressively more silty layer, perhaps formed as the landlocked sea silted up. Next, a reservoir rock, perhaps a layer of sand dunes, formed as the wind blew away the finer silt particles and left only the coarser sand. And finally, an impermeable cap rock, perhaps a thick layer of marine shale, deposited as the sea level rose and the sand dunes became inundated under deep water. But now, suppose that the earth here had been folded by compressional forces, and our section revealed this, we have the final feature we need, the trap. So now we see better what we are asking of geophysics. Tell us that this is indeed a source rock, rich in organic remains. Tell us that this silty layer was once a permeable path, allowing migration of petroleum from source rock to reservoir. Tell us that this is indeed a porous reservoir, capable of holding lots of oil or gas tell us that this is indeed a cap rock, stopping the petroleum from rising any further. And tell us that this is indeed a smooth, unbroken anticlinal trap. Some task. But there's more. We want to know the thickness of the source rock so that we have more confidence that it has generated lots of petroleum. We want to know if we expect oil or gas woody vegetation tending to give us gas and marine remains tending to give us oil. It also depends on the temperature. If the source rock has been cooked only at moderate depth, oil. And if the source rock has been down to the high temperature of great depth, gas. Or in an intermediate case, perhaps some gas and some oil. Then we want to know the thickness of the reservoir rock and its porosity so that we know how much petroleum we could possibly get per acre or per hectare. And we want to know where the spill point is, since that defines the maximum extent of the trap. And we want to know the closure, since that defines the oil and gas column. We want to know the depth, of course, because that's how far we have to drill. 
Perhaps we're worried about that silty rock. Can we be sure that it was once a permeable path from source to reservoir? Perhaps we would be more comfortable if we could see a fracture zone or a fault to act as a direct conduit of petroleum from the source rock up into the reservoir. But then we must know that the conduit does not break through the cap rock, for in that case, much of the petroleum would be lost. There's another risk. We want to know about timing. Originally, we had this situation. Now, we have this situation. The layers are both tilted and folded. But suppose that they tilted first, and then all the petroleum migrated into the reservoir and up and away and was lost. And then the layers were folded. The trap is barren, the cupboard is bare. If we drill to the reservoir, we shall find only water. So, we want to know which came first, the migration or the trap. And then we have to remember that this anticline is the very simplest of traps. We also wish to see clearly, for example, a trap formed by a normal fault. Provided that the fault is sealed, there is the potential for trapping oil and gas on the upthrown side of the fault. And then there's the unconformity trap, where part of the reservoir rock, and indeed part of its cap also, have been eroded away and later sealed by a new cap rock. Here is the potential for trapping oil and gas against the underside of the unconformity. And another form of stratigraphic trap, the isolated reservoir body. This may take the form of a limestone reef, completely enclosed by the cap rock. Or it may be a river channel incised into an ancient surface and subsequently filled with sand of reservoir quality. Or it may be an isolated sand body built up at an ancient coastline, a bar or a barrier island, or a delta margin island, where the winnowing of the sand by the waves often yields a reservoir of very good porosity. And then there's the very definite possibility of... Whoa! Enough! This exploration task is beginning to sound too formidable. The exploration task is to find source rock and reservoir rock and migration path and trap and seal. But it's only in a virgin area that geophysics is asked to do all of these. In an area already drilled, the task is simpler. Yes. For example... Suppose that we have already discovered oil in an analogous situation nearby. Then we know there is a source rock. We know there is a reservoir rock. We know there is a migration path and a cap rock. We know that all the conditions are right at the location of our discovery. And now the exploration task is just to follow the reservoir away from the discovery in hopes of finding another trap. Then we have only to check whether the trap has leaked. If not... Our task is already done. We say, drill, with good hopes of success. In fact, for the first 50 years, this was what geophysics did. Tracing the continuity of layers and looking for traps in them. It did that very well, of course. But it's only in recent years that geophysics has started to say anything about the nature of the rocks and the content of the rocks the other aspects of the exploration task.